Zacchaeus had all the money that, that he had, but he was still missing Jesus. And uh, in reality, we could have all the money, we could have all the wealth, we could have all the, all the uh, uh, material things in this world, but if we don't have Jesus, we're missing a great thing in our life. We're missing the main purpose in our life. So we see uh, that Zacche uh, verses 1 through 11 talks about Zacchaeus and the fact that, that we need a Jesus more than um, earthly things. But we also see uh, verses 12 through 27 uh, talks about a parable. Uh, a man goes out and he uh, uh, finds some servants uh, to work in his field. And um, he, he goes out and he, he finds them and then he leaves his field and, and he tells those men to work in his field. And the men uh, start to say, you know, he, you know, he hasn't sown where we sown. He hasn't done what, what we have done. And if we're not careful, we could have that same, same mentality. You know, we, we could have that same mentality, you know, you know maybe, uh, you're, do you have bus routes here? Yes, maybe, you know, those bus routes are low. Maybe they're, they're not as high as you would like them to, to be. Hey, but just keep on going. Hey, the Lord will bless you. And um, so we see that we're supposed to work in his kingdom. Even though it may not look profitable at times, we need to still work in the field and keep on going for the Lord. But we also see uh, verses 26 through 40 we see that uh, Jesus is going through the city. Um, and, you know, his disciples, uh, they, they go and find a colt tied up in Jesus, and they bring uh, the colt to Jesus uh, so he could ride through the city. And uh, while, while Jesus is uh, going through the city, his disciples are praising God. Um, and then there's a lot of Pharisees that that, you know, say that they're, that you know that they're making too much noise, they're they're being uh, too uh, making too much of a racket. But Jesus said, "Hey, if if they wouldn't praise me, the rocks would immediately cry out." And the fact is that we need to praise the Lord. We need to we need to uh, uh, you know not be ashamed of praising the Lord and telling other people about Jesus. Come on. And so this morning, I would like to preach or teach on uh, God's heart towards the lost. Um, the first, uh, first heart or the, the um, you know, attitude towards the lost is uh, found in verses 41 uh, through 44, and that's a tender heart towards the lost. Uh, verse uh, 41, it says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. You know, he, he saw the people. He said, man, they need Jesus. And, and he, he, his heart was moved. He, was, he had a, a tender heart towards the lost, and that's what we need to have. We need to have a tender heart towards the lost. Hey, nobody's greater than the next person. Everybody's, you know, um, just a one beggar uh, telling another beggar where to find some bread, you know. And uh, we, we need to make sure that we have a tender heart Hey, when's the last time we, we went through the city, uh, San Antonio, and, and drove and, and, and saw the, the, the wickedness uh, in the city? And, and when's the last time it moved our hearts to weep over, uh, weep over the lost and those people that are not saved? So we see that he wept over the lost in uh, verse 41. <clears throat> but a tender heart... Um, if you have a tender heart, you would want to meet the physical needs to get the gospel to them. You know, um, you know, if you are meeting, a f you know, uh, sometimes there's people that will not listen to you if you don't meet their physical need first. You know, that, that there's people out there that, that are maybe homeless, they, that they want food or they want money. And sometimes that, that just simple, you know, giving somebody a meal or something like that can, can touch their heart and they'll listen to you. Um, instead of just, you know, uh, expecting them to, to listen to you just because, you know, you're you. <laughs> but, but also a tender heart uh, will tell the truth. Verses uh, 42 uh, through uh, verse 44, saying, if thou hast known even thou, at least in uh, this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes, 
uh, for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and ca uh, compass thee around and keep thee on every side. So, you know, the a tender heart will tell the truth. Uh, so we need to tell the truth about sin. Sin is wicked. Sin is, is, is uh, anything against this Bible is sin. And the truth is, you know, uh, we need to tell people that there is sin. And not only that there's sin, but the uh, truth, um, the truth uh, about where sin will take them. If they don't accept Jesus Christ, they will die and go to hell. And we need to, to make sure that, that we get that uh, truth to the lost as soon as we can. We might be done pretty early this morning. <laughs> um, so secondly, we also see a, not a, uh, just a tender heart, but a tough heart. What I mean by that is a, is a, is a spirit that, that said, that says, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to compromise for what the world has. I'm going to stand on biblical truth. Uh, verses uh, 44 through 45, it says, um, uh, actually verse 45, it says, he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto, unto them, it is written, my house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. You know, he, uh, Jesus told them that, that, hey, you're making a mockery out of my house and you're making a mockery uh, out of the church and, and, hey, you need to get out. Sometimes we, we need to stand on biblical truth and say, no, I'm not going to go to the bar with you. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to uh, do this. Why? Because you're, you're different from the world and the, and the world needs to see that. No, if we do not stand for right, then the lost will not see the light that we have. If you go to Matthew, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5 and verse um, 14, Matthew chapter 5 verse 14, it says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under, under a bushel, but, a, uh, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light uh, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, you know, if we stand for right, then the lost, or if we do not stand for right, then the lost will not see our light. You know, what person has seen our light? Um, do people know that you're a Christian? Do people ask why you do not cuss? Do people um, ask why, why you don't laugh at the perverted jokes? Or uh, do people ask why, you know, uh, you're so kind and hardworking? You know, I, I'm just asking, does your light shine to the world? Um. You know, that they're not going to see the light if we are just like them. And so we need to make sure that, that we are different from the world. But also, thirdly, and I believe this is, brings all, all the attitudes or hearts together, is a teaching heart. In verses uh, 47, back to Luke chapter 19. Um, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Luke chapter 19 and verse uh, 47 again, it says, um, and, he and he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priest and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear him. So if we just have a tender heart that Sometimes just having that, that attitude or that heart can cause us to, to compromise it and say, you know what, you know what, maybe this little drink won't hurt or, or whatever the case may be. But if we have just a tough heart, then, then we can come off as a jerk or, or a holier-than-thou person um, or an attitude. 
Uh, but if we have a teaching heart, it brings all of it together. Because, hey, we need to teach them, you know, uh, so what, what should we teach them? We should teach them the purity of God's word. Uh, Psalm chapter 12, verse 6 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Psalm chapter 19, or, yeah, 19 verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 8 says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Psalm chapter 119, verse 140 says, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And so, <clears throat> you know, so we need to make sure that we uh, teach uh, those that, that maybe just get saved. We need to teach them the purity of God's word, the purity of, of the King James Bible. We need to make sure that we, uh, that we teach them the word of God. But we also ought to teach and preach uh, God's word with passion. In verse uh, 47 through 48 says, And he taught a daily in the temple, and the chief priest and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. Verse 48 says, and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Obviously, Jesus taught in such a way that he grabbed their attention. And, you know, uh, many times, you know, some Christians say, you know, I don't really get excited really in church. I don't say amen. You know, I, I, you know it just makes me look weird. But a lot of times we see you at the football game and we see that, that you're going crazy and, you, you know, you're, you're, you have the pom-poms, you, you, you know, you paint your face, you know, you, you go all out. But we need to have some passion in church and, and reaching the lost as well. We need to uh, have some passion and some excitement uh, uh, in church and the Christian life. And... Um, of course, I, I I like all the jerseys and, and and I like football. Okay, but we need to make sure that that doesn't uh, super uh, supersede our excitement for the Lord, Amen. and we need to make sure that 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 we uh, get excited and have some passion for the Lord. And so, the three uh, hearts or attitudes we need to have towards the loss is a tender heart, a tough heart and a teaching heart that teaches, um, you know, those the, the um, way to go. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for down on the cross, Lord. I thank you for, Lord, just being so good to us, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And Lord, I